So yesterday I watched a lot of tutorials about making water in Blender because you know I'm obsessed with water. I can drink water out of anything. I can drink water out of a cup, bottle, your mom, out of your, <laughs> your sister. So to get better at it, I watch a bunch of tutorials. Not about the drinking part, that I'm already an expert. It was about making rivers in Blender and I noticed one problem of flow with these tutorials. I watch one from Unreal Lab. The water simulation looks perfect, the materials look even better, but it still had that issue. I watch another one from Creators. It's a simple waterfall. The simulation again looks perfect, the materials look perfect, the scene overall perfect, but still had the same issue. And then I watch another one from my Croft 16. It just looks perfect as well. Then another one from MK Fluids. Still the same thing. Water looks perfect, the simulation is perfect, but still had the same issue. So I thought to myself, maybe this was a problem with Manta Flow. So I watched another tutorial from CG Droid, who was using Flip Fluids, which is a more advanced fluid solver than Manta Flow. The water here looks even better, but still had the same issue. So what's the issue? You can see in every example of this, whenever the simulation starts, you have to first let the, the river run a bit. You don't start with a river that is flowing. So you're wasting a lot of computation power or simulation time on that part that is not going to be usable. Most of the time, if you're using this for, for a production, you just want a river that is already flowing, not one that is starting to flow. So today I want to show you how you can use the techniques they teach in these tutorials, but with a river that's continuously flowing and it's not just beginning to flow so you do not have to waste any computation power yeah so let's jump in and uh, get started so you can see in this example i have set up a quick river if i go to frame zero i can start and you can see the or the river starts immediately flowing instead of just starting from here and then flowing slowly by slowly so normally you would have a cube like this or a plane and uh, use that as your fluid source. You would have to wait all these frames for this simulation to run until the entire uh, river is filled up with water. You're going to waste a lot of frames before you even start uh, simulating something that is going to be usable. I found a more semi-procedural system that you could create uh, to do that. So to do the river, all you have to do is just start with a plane and make the shape of the river you want. Uh, so let me come in here add a loop here just push this down like this you can shape it however you want and because this is going to be semi procedure you can do quite a lot of things I'm just going to so if you're creating the river you want to keep it flat like this as you're working uh, so that the elevation is done using a lattice Okay, so after you make the river, you can add a lattice. A, a lattice object is just a deformer that can deform meshes. So we're going to get something like this and uh, we can go, uh, we want it to be a plane. So I'm going to remove the, if I go to the lattice properties, I'm going to remove the W part. So that uh, is just a flat plane. You can scale up the mesh, the, the lattice to fit uh, the mesh like that and then select the mesh, then the lattice, control P, lattice deform, uh, just like that. And then now we can go to we, we can add other subdivisions we want to our lattice like that. Turn this into a slope, select the lattice, you can rotate it or just start deforming this so that our river flows nicely. Yeah, so we have our river. Let's work on our fluid simulation. So I'm going to go to edit mode and just select the, the river itself, go into the object data and add a new vertex group, assign that and uh, I can create a new object. Uh, this is just going to be a cube, set up a new geometry nodes. And I'm going to grab our plane here, drag the terrain into the into geometry nodes. Now let's look at that. Uh, let's look at that. You can see this is it here. Uh, you want to use relative, so that is in the same position as the original. And I just want to select the river part. All you have to do is get the vertex group you created so I'm just going to use an att a named attribute node. I think it's, yeah, it's group. I can use delete and use that as the delete. You can see it's it has deleted the selection we created from the vertex group, but I want an inverse of that. So I'm going to use the Boolean math to select the opposite. So not, and that's it. Now we have a river object we can use for the simulation. Uh, it's intersecting with the mesh, which might cause a few issues when we start simu simulating. So I can use a set position node 
and the normal, the mesh by its normals to push it in a bit. Vector math control the scale here so that it's not pushed in. So I can shrink this so that it's not intersecting. That's our river. Uh, this is procedure. Uh, I need to make sure that this is the final output here. Yeah. So I can come in here. If I want to change, adjust the river, I can just do that under the river extends. This is very useful because now if I create a domain, and I'm also going to show you how to procedurally create the domain so that everything is procedural, but I want to do a quick test here. If I create a domain here, and uh, to make my fluid simulations faster, I've created this add-on called QFluids. Uh, if you're a Patreon or a YouTube member, you can get it. Anyone else can also get it from my from my Gumroad page. Links are going to be in the description. But what I'm doing is basically ac accessing the fluids simulation settings in one place instead of just going into this tab for every object. Uh, so you can do the same thing without the add-on. I'm just trying to make it much easier for me. So I'll do a create domain, which just basically creates the domain. And uh, I also added this functionality because right now I can't see through the domain. I can just toggle see through so that I can see through the simulation. Uh, so yeah, I also want this new river we have just created out of this mesh to be an inflow object. So instead of going to fluid, inflow, and then uh, liquid, I can just do create inflow and that is done for me. And all the settings that are here are now here. It's just something I did to make the creation process faster. Yeah, so I want this to be an inflow uh, type, should be inflow and uh, this could be, I think it's a planner. Now if I hit play, you can see we have our fluid simulation already working, but uh, the only issue we are having is, is going through our plane. Uh, so this, is, this should be a fluid collider planner as well, 200. Yeah, you can see you simulate and you immediately get a river instead of getting something, instead of having to wait uh, for, for the river to flow. Uh, so yeah, this is what we have, but I could make this better. Let me first turn off the meshing. We could make this even better um, because you can see the water starts off up here and uh, I want it to start off down here. I want to be able to procedurally control the amount of water we have in the river. Uh, for the depth, it's easy. We can just select this mesh. When you increase the depth, you can see our inflow also changes. So to control the amount of fluid, we want to remove these side walls here and just remain with this. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to come back to this mesh, original mesh, and uh, create a new vertex group. Uh, this time, I just want, yeah, the bottom side. So group one was this. So group two, I just want it to be this. So I'll assign this. So this is going to be the river bed. And, uh, now we can go back to geometry nodes and uh, use a named attribute again. This time it's going to be the river bed. And uh, again, use delete, delete. So we have our river bed. Oh, we need this to be the final output as well. So that is considered by the simulation. You can see how our river is, but uh, we want to control the depth of uh, the river so i'll just use an extrude node and that way i can control uh, we need i can control the depth like this so if we look at this you can see it's a bit empty at the bottom so i'll just join this so that is not and uh, make this into a single mesh check your normals to make sure that everything is looking good you need to change to flip uh, these faces here actually uh, i need to flip these here now we have an inflow object that we can control where we can control the height and uh, yeah we can control the depth of the river i'm going to export expose this offset here let me toggle see through for this as well and you can see now we start with a river that is uh big so one thing i usually do in my simulations uh we don't need these bounding boxes uh, the fluids to collide with this bounding box say so with the bounding box so i can come into the domain settings you can turn them off here or if you're using the add-on uh, the settings are here the boundaries you can just turn all of those off yeah now you can see we start with a river that is actually flowing you can even change the size of the river so i can make this bigger i can make this bigger by just Spreading this a bit. 
and the simulation will update. So if I go back to frame one, look at that. But uh, you also have to adjust the domain size. That's how you do that. You can watch the other tutorials I showed in the beginning to see how you can get perfect materials and create an, an amazing scene around that. Uh, they are very great tutorials. The only flaw I saw in them was that you had to simulate, you had to waste about 200 frames to have the fluid start outflowing uh, before you can get something usable. Other than that, they are amazing tutorials and uh, yeah, shout out to the creators of that made those. If you want my Q Fluids add-on, you can become a Patreon or get it on my YouTube membership page or even on my Gumroad page. All links are going to be added in the description.